Firstly, let us introduce the color coding system that we will use to decipher the Siglum Dei meth. Here we see that each of the seven planets is assigned one of the seven colors of the spectrum of light divided in a prism. Next, in the following series of diagrams, we will be looking at the letters in the outermost heptagon as above the letters from the interior of the outermost heptagon, which we will be looking at below. In the first array, we see the seven archangels whose names govern over the seven days of the week, color-coded as according to the planets, However, in this arrangement, we will be reading their names not up and down along columns as color-coded, but from left to right along rows. And likewise, in the second array, we can see that the names may be read color-coded diagonally, or may be read across as rows from left to right. Thus, the seven names given by John D. for his Enochian planetary archangels can each be encrypted into the outermost heptagon's lettering as well as the lettering interior to the outermost heptagon, so that the first letter of an angel's name appears in the first box of the first row of the heptagon while the second letter of the same angel's name will appear in the first box of the second row of the heptagon. Likewise, the second angel's name, first letter, will appear in the second box of the second row, and thus the second letter of the second angel's name will appear in the third row in the second box thereof and etc. Here we see the planetary color code again. The colors are all the same. However, the order we will be looking at the attributes in is different. First, we see the daughters of light, the interior to the points of the heptagram. The second are the sons of light, the heptagram itself. Third, are the sons of sons, the innermost heptagon, and fourth, the daughters of daughters, the second or middle heptagon. And because we can see that the heptagram itself has a skip one pattern, we can follow this inner sorting method all the way around the heptagram as it intertwines with the heptagon, and observe that the result of this technique is a slightly different attribute for each second line than for all of the other attributes on that side, such that each attribute of the second line will be slanted one position over from its own similar attributes on the next side. And in the next section we will discuss in brief the derivation of the unpronounceable names of God through a rotation of the external ring, either clockwise or counterclockwise.